Hello everyone and welcome to this video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie and I am a nerdy flute player, which means I do covers of video game, anime, TV, film, music. And if you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the cards above to all of my cover music. I am also a Twitch streamer and you can find me over on twitch.tv slash Katie Shesko, where I play games such as Breath of the Wild, especially Breath of the Wild bingos. And if you wanna know what that is, <laughs> Again, I will leave a link up in the cards about what a Breath of the Wild bingo is. I'm also can be found playing near and games with my audience. If you like my content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And if you want to support my content, you can consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com slash Katie Shesko. We have some bonus perks, and backtracks to all of my cover songs, things of that sort. Or you can always consider making a one-time donation via my Ko-fi page, and I will leave links to everything as well as places to find my music on all of your favorite streaming services in the description below. Today, we are doing another Dimash reaction, and this one is Hello from the singer 2018. This one was another one that was highly suggested to me because there is a lot of flute playing. So as a flute player, I'm very interested in that as well as just to hear more from Dimash. As typical with these types of reactions, I will watch the video in full at first. You'll kind of get some initial thoughts and reactions. And then at the end of the video, we will go back and dissect all of it. And we'll go into a little bit more detail where I will offer my thoughts and opinions based on being a musician and being a wind player. So let's go ahead and dive in. <clears throat> Gorgeous. I've been alone with you inside. So now we get to hear Dimash sing in English. This is the first time I'm hearing him sing in English. Very well pronounced. He sounds like a native English speaker. Ooh. And again, very haunting. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile. You're all I've ever wanted. And my arms are open wide. Cause you know just what to say. And you know just what to do. Very delicate. Again, a great register for him. I love I love this register from him, and his English is fantastic. Yes, more flute. Yes. <laughs> I love the passion. Love the passion. I love the more prominent flute in this song. I say flute as a relative term. <laughs>
Again, I love the background that all the background performers are live musicians. Amazing flute playing. An amazing stage presence from Dimash, even though he's not singing. Again, the silence. He's carrying this so well. Oh, and how long that was sustained? And the stage presence, again, when he's not singing, is fantastic. Again, his opera background coming in here. Love it. Wow. Ugh, the passion. stage presence, the silence between the notes. We talked about this in the last one. Fantastic. Oh, I, I love the little sly smile at the end. All right, that was fantastic. So this one didn't have quite the range that I've seen in his last couple of videos, but again, not a problem because it didn't need it in this song. So let's start from the beginning and kind of go through it. And I will give a little bit more of my thoughts and opinions on this. All right, so I had to look up how to pronounce this because I do not, <laughs> I do not speak the language. So I apologize if I mispronounce it, but the sabuza, I tried my best. So the sabuza is, is a traditional Kazakh instrument. And I did a little bit of research on it after watching this. So, um, and it's, I mean, this is like the precursor to the modern flute, which was just like a, a tube with some holes in it and you blow into it and there you go. So primitive is not the right word, but it's it's the, the modern or it's the precursor to what is now a modern flute. And these kinds of flutes are still readily used, readily available. And I absolutely love them. I don't own any wooden flutes like this. I would love to own a couple, um, but they take practice because while they have similar finger fingerings to the flute, because there's no keys um, and it's just holes, like the fingerings are a lot the fingerings are can be quite different, but you know it's similar to like I would say, I would imagine it's similar to the like the Irish penny whistle or anything of that sort. Yeah, I just I love these wooden instruments. They have such a a haunting and a very um like a very earthy sound, and it makes sense because they're you know they were taken from what were probably reeds at some point just they make these gorgeous sounds and this he's a fantastic player whoever is doing this it's it's more than just kind of blowing into it you know he's he has some of these some of the some of these trills and these and I just, I love this and, you know, non-Western music. 
I just love this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I listen to when I need to relax or if I'm like working and just need something in the background. It's just so relaxing and it just sounds so cool. I'm in love. I'm so glad that they decided to use this because oh, it's gorgeous. I've been alone with you inside my mind. So again, he's starting in this lower register. I love it. Um, his English is fantastic. So this is the third language I have now heard him sing in. Uh, first was, oh my gosh. So I've heard him sing in French. I've heard him sing in Mandarin and now he's singing in English. And yeah, it's, it's flawless. It's so good. The fact that he can sing in multiple languages is really challenging. It's really challenging because all of those languages have very different structure. It's not like where you have like French and Spanish, which obviously are different languages, but they have a lot of similar sounds. And I, I can kind of understand a little bit of Spanish because I know French and I'm sure it's the same vice versa. And English borrows a lot of, <laughs> a lot of words from a lot of different languages. So yeah, it's fantastic. And in my dreams have kissed your lips a thousand times. I sometimes see you pass outside my door. And then let's talk about again the the backtracking or the the accompaniment is I love again it's very subtle. It's barely there. And then you have the Spoza player just with these like little accents, these little articulations, or they're not articulations, they're like ornamentations, just they add a little bit of color. They add, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if those kinds of things weren't in the music. It was just him kind of improvising it and adding a little bit of color and dimension to the background and to kind of help bridge the silence, bridge between the phrases that Dimash is singing. I, I love stuff like that. It's just, it adds a little bit of something that, yeah, isn't, isn't there. And I personally love that stuff. Oh, I love those minor chords in there. That's just, oh. Um, I guess now is probably a good time to mention that, um, while I've, I'm sure I've heard this full, the original song in full at some point in my life. It's not one that I know off the top of my head. I'm, I'm kind of going into this, the, I don't know too much about the original Lionel Richie song. I know it was done by Lionel Richie. I know the hello, is it me you're looking for? And that's about all I know from that song, from the original at least. So, and here I really like the driving piano. Um, we talked about this in the last reaction where like you have like these longer phrases. So having like a driving beat behind it just really helps keep the song going. Cause you know just what to say and you know just what to do. So here he, again, he's, he's really good at singing very delicately. You know that it's eventually going to build up. So it's, his very he's very delicate but it's a very full sound which is again so hard to do to be so delicate but not sound like timid and um withdrawn it it's that's hard to do to have that to sing with confidence but like it still be delicate I love you. Ah, uh, again. So it's these these spaces between the phrases and how he's singing. You can like there's so much emotion in his voice and it's just so well done. It's delicate. You can hear the longing. You can hear just how much that he's just like, I just I want to tell you that I love you. And that's that he's like, I just want to tell you. Oh, that dramatic pause where you kind of had the piano behind there. I love you. And it's just like, and then he drops it down a little bit and it's just like, oh, that is, that is like, that gives you goosebumps. You're like, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay. You can tell me you love me anytime you want. <laughs> 
Like I just, it, there's so much passion and emotion in it. Love it. And here we go. I'm loving the spurza. I'm I'm probably gonna mis mispronounce it eight million times between now and the end of this video, so I my apologies. But I love the spurza. 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 I'm spurza. I'm sorry. I know it's it's horribly mispronounced. We're just. I love that the spurza comes back in. It it just it adds so much to the song, um, because it it has that again it has that very earthy that very like connected sound just because of how old these instruments are and how much they have been used throughout history that it, it is now part of our collective like understanding and kind of in our collective minds of what these sound like and there's something very comforting about them just because just because of how ingrained in human culture that they are and not just the spuza but any of those like kind of wooden ancient instruments and again ancient is a relative term but we we hear them so much and variations uh, on those instruments are found in so many cultures that it's just it's part of us so when we hear it it there's something comforting and very at home about them and it works for the song this the song of like i want to be with you i want to tell you how much i love you um are you even thinking about me? Do you even want to be with me? Just having that that instrument, that spoza, tie it back into like the core of human emotion of wanting of loving someone and wanting to be loved in return. It, it's it's those little details and those choices of instrumentation that really hit the heart of a song and really when you hear it says something to you as the listener that you probably aren't consciously aware of but it's because of those choices that make you that are that draw you in to this kind of music so again the instrumentation has picked up a little bit we i i do this all the time in my cover songs where you kind of start kind of slow especially in slower songs where you have a simple simple instrumentation and then as the song goes it builds it builds it builds and then it kind of fades off so i really like arrangements that do that because i do those kinds of arrangements so that's personally i love it because i think it really adds to a song it starts slow and then it builds and you you kind of add more instrumentation to help with that feeling of build Kings of Kings. Again, and he, he's kind of playing with what would probably be a more straight, say, like a more on the beat singing, but he's kind of playing with the rhythm a little bit and it's stuff like that that just gives the song some interest. It kind of sets us, sets apart the different verses a little bit and doing that, it allows you to add a little bit more emotion to what it is you're singing because you kind of have like... Like, I, I, I'm going to say a hiccup, but it's not like an intentional or it's not an unintentional or like a forgetting thing. It's just like it kind of catches you off guard a little bit and it kind of adds to this like I'm, I'm getting choked up. I'm getting choked up, choked up trying to, to express this to you. And obviously he's not choked up. It is very intentional, but that's what the feeling is as the listener that you get. I sometimes see. And again, the opera sound coming in. There you go. You can really hear the passion in his voice now. So again, he's kind of gone up a little bit. Where again, straining isn't straining isn't the right word, but there's now a lot more emotion behind. There's a lot more pleading in this section, and it just it adds to the song so well. Like, hello, hello, do you see me? Am I? Are you looking for me? Because here I am. I'm trying to get your attention here. Love it. I can see the new like, hey. I, can see the new I think I think you want to be with me. No, 
Like, hi! Come on! Like, hello? Yeah, come on. So again, you know, you can hear in this this vibrato and in this register, you can hear just the tr how much training he's had, and it 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 had it has his operatic roots to it, which I love. I love that kind of stuff. I don't listen to much opera, but I appreciate singers who sing opera because it is very demanding, and when it's done right, it it hits you because you know the original instrument was singing was our was the human voice, so again, these kind of things just like they, they touch you at your core as a human because these are the things that have been part of human history. So. Again, more of that flute in there. The, more of that spruza. And right here, even though Okay, so there's a lot to talk about in this little section. He has such a stage presence that, like, even though someone else is kind of the soloist right now, he's still, he's not slinking in the background. He's just, he's still like, yeah, I'm the star. This is my solo, but I'm not afraid to share the limelight with this other amazing musician, which it's really hard to do. Some soloists can be kind of divas where they're just like, I'm the soloist and I should be featured at all times, but... I think it's a sign of a true musician that you can still command the stage. He's still commanding the stage. He still has a really awesome stage presence, but he's allowing the Spoza player to kind of shine and do their thing. And it adds a lot to the song and it adds some space. You know, as a soloist, you don't have to, as a soloist, you don't have to be singing the entire time. You don't have to be playing the entire time. You can let your amazing background musicians shine and take center stage for a couple of seconds. It's, it works. And, but he still, he still has an amazing stage presence, which is fantastic. And again, the Spruza player, ah, uh, I love this, this kind of playing this, I'm sure it's not improvised, but this kind of improvised quality to it. Uh, I've done this in my Last of Us song, which I will leave a link above. If you've never heard the Last of Us theme song, it's a very simple melody. So what I did when I did my arrangement was in this middle section where the guitar is usually is just kind of playing these arpeggios, um, I wrote what sounds something that's improvised. And actually it was kind of improvised. I did several improvisation takes and I kind of took the best parts for, from each of those takes and put it together in one solo. And if you want to play that, I will leave a link below where you can find my sheet music because that is available as sheet music. It wasn't wholly improvised. It was written out, but it has this improvisation quality, which is just really fun. And it adds something to the song, which I love stuff like that. Again, I might be biased because I do some of this in my own arrangements, but I love it. And then here again, we talked about this in the last one where it's the space between the notes that really make music and like it almost goes silent for like a full second. Almost a full two seconds of silence and you like you know that the song isn't done but that, that just builds a lot of tension that has that has built so much tension right there and i love it i'm here for it <laughs> Ooh, yeah. and now now we're here for dimash to kind of just show off what he can do this is, that's what this whole section is about. And I kind of love that in arrangements where like, you're not doing the original, it's not the original song, you're doing a cover of it. So this is where you can kind of add your own flair to it, add what you have to offer. Dimash is not Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie would probably not have done this originally. And this wasn't as common back, back in the pop music, popular music of the time, but it works really well when you're doing a cover to kind of add your own spin to a song that everyone already knows, 
but you're like, it's a great song, but I'm doing it and I'm going to add my flavor and my flair to it, which is what I do with my own music. And again, I don't know what song, what instrument is going on in the background. Um, it sounds probably like a cello or a bass, and I could be completely wrong. I fully admit that. Um, but whatever that bass tone behind, um, it almost sounds like a, digger, a didgeridoo, whatever it is, it's adding such just a depth. It, it kind of has like that frequency that you hear in like meditation music that keeps your brain occupied, but it's allowing Dimash to really just kind of show off a bit. And I don't say that in a, like a derogatory way. He's here to show off. He's here to show off what he can do. And yeah, that kind of just underlying bass tone just allows Dimash to really show that off. And this was almost Yodel-esque. It's not yodeling, but it, it kind of has that yodeling quality, which is really just, again, showing his range, showing his diversity, showing that he can sing in a lot of these different genres. Uh, we had like the French song with SOS, and then we had Autumn Strong, which he sang in Mandarin, which was originally Japanese and was more contemporary because it was written in the 1940s or 50s, or actually it might not have been written in the 40s or 50s, but it was, it, it's more contemporary. And then Hello from Lionel Richie is a very poppy song. And yeah, so he's showing off what he can do and he's like kind of bringing in these different elements from his own background to this very pop song. How he held that note that long is amazing. I hear he does a lot of swimming to help with breath support. Maybe I should take up swimming. I don't know when I would have time to go swimming, but his breath support is amazing. And that, that pitch was so steady. It didn't waver too much because sometimes when you are running out of air, your the pitch and the, the tuning of the note can just plummet. It can either go really sharp or really flat, depending on what note it is and at what register. But it was so steady and it was sustained for so long and it didn't like, it didn't falter, which is really hard to do because I know when I'm doing something and I'm running out of air, my tone can just go all over the place. <laughs> and it's, it's work to make sure that you have enough breath to get through whatever phrase that you're trying to do. That, that was amazing. That was how long he held that with how well it came out. Perfection. It was so good. So good. And here again, we're seeing his stage presence, even though he's not singing right now. The background singers are singing it. It's fantastic. And again, letting the background singers sing the words and he's just, I'm, he's like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ornament this. That's something I don't do a whole lot of, um, something I kind of want to experiment with in some of my future covers where I have my, my background, my backtrack play the main melody where I, and I just kind of ornament over it. I have done covers where like, I have two flute parts where I have the flute playing the melody and then another flute kind of ornamenting over it. But I have not really done this too much. And I, I love it. I love it when other people do it, but I'm afraid to do it myself. <laughs> Story of my life where I'm just like, everyone else who does it, it's amazing. But if I do it, it's going to sound like crap. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this. I love this where you have amazing performers behind you. Let those performers shine a little bit and you just get to show off. I love this.
again, holding that note and it being so steady and so amazing is just fantastic. It's just a testament to how much he's worked on this and how amazing his breath support is. That is not easy. That stuff is not easy to do. It's something that I work on frequently in my own practice sessions that having those long sustained notes not start going out of tune just to keep them steady. Fantastic. And again, we have this silence between the phrases, which you cannot easily do with a backtrack. So the background performers, kudos to you again. Kudos to the to the um, production value of this sh- of this show because it, it's stuff like this that really makes music, and it's stuff like this that really makes people love live performances. You because you know when you listen to a recording, yeah, the recording is amazing, but it's those live performances where you have like a full band behind you where you can play with stuff like this. You can kind of feel what's the audience feeling tonight. Can we can we have this pause be a little bit longer or maybe maybe we need to keep it a little bit shorter? Um, it just that's the beauty of live performance like this. And you can't get that with a backtrack. So again, kudos to the background performers who are on point and ready to come in when he is. And again, the very delicate, very delicate. Went from like this amazing operatic solo to this very delicate. And you can see, you can see the passion. You can hear the emotion in his voice. He's really good at giving you enough emotion that you feel it yourself in the audience, but it doesn't overwhelm his performance. It's so well done. And then yay, more of the spruza. spruza. And I love the sly little smiles because he knows that he's nailed it. He knows that he he got the reaction he wanted from the audience. He knows that everyone loves it. It's it's that smile that you get after a performance and you're you just know that it turned out exactly the way you wanted. At least that's how I feel. Like after I perform I haven't performed like that. I've never been this big of a soloist. But it's that moment of, yeah. I got this. I did this. And it was awesome. And everyone loved it. It's that moment of just like relief of like, oh, everything went well. Another fantastic performance from Dimash. I loved it. Again, I'm sorry for probably mispronouncing the flute that was used. I tried my best. I only speak English and my French is very, very rusty. So I am not as well versed in speaking in other languages as Dimash is. But I hope you enjoyed this reaction. I loved that they used the sp- the spruza with throughout the song because it just it really it really filled out the arrangement and I love stuff like that. I love that kind of like that ethnic that very like relaxing meditative music those those sounds and popular songs just really draw me in love them if you like this content please leave me a comment below and if there is another dimash song or any other band that you want me to check out that you would like to see me react to leave me a comment below i'm trying my best to respond to all of the comments but Uh, The support has been amazing. I try my best, but I do write down all of your suggestions for for sure. So if I don't respond, thank you so much for even taking the time to leave a comment. I really do truly appreciate it. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel for more reactions, for more general flute info, music videos, and some of my Twitch streams as well. I really do truly appreciate your time and energy. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. The Sabuza. 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 Okay.